is there a huge difference with quality? How are South Africans or Africans going to test these products that have been so dubbed as organic from an organic farm with high concentrations of probiotics? The easiest way to, to look at it is the label is a, a good telltale sign. So if you if you read the label and it you just look at the organisms that they're listing. So you know the most the most prolific kefir organism is going to be a Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens and Lactobacillus kefiri. So those two. So if you see those two on the label, then you know that's a good starting sign that at least it has the two major kefir organisms. So this is going to be a, a reasonable product, I think. Okay, it's organic. It's got no additives. It's got a couple of kefir strains. Tick, tick, all good. But if you read the label and it's got, you know, uh, lactobacillus, um, you know, uh, like a uh, just a, a generic one, or it's a like a um, Staphylococcus thermophilus, uh, a, bi a bifidobacterial strain, you know, then you're just talking uh, a yogurt culture. So this is the telltale side. If you just see the kefiri, it's easy to remember. It's just got kefiri, kefir renovations. You just look for the kefir in the word of the strain. Then you know at least there's a couple in there and there's going to be some benefits. Even better, if it's on the label, you know, made with real kefir grains, then this is even better. This means it's going to have the full gamut of different kefir organisms. And then it's just a matter of getting, getting in touch with a manufacturer. You can contact them on their social media or send them an email, give them a phone call and just ask them, hey guys, is this, is this stuff made with real kefir grains or is this a commercially available starter culture? Mm. You know, some companies are really cheeky. They literally have no kefir in there. It's just literally yogurt culture and they call it kefir. And the reason why, because there's no legislation to protect the consumer yet, because it's mm. such an early, early product coming into that sort of mainstream commercial space that it's not regulated as such. It will eventually, there will be some provenance of you know, how you call things and what you're allowed to call and what you're not allowed to call. That'll come in time. But at the moment, the easiest thing is just to look for something that's made with real kefir grains. And if you're willing to go down to the next step, you know, it's so easy and it's so cost effective to make kefir yourself. Because once you get kefir grains, you have that for life. That one culture can be used over and over and over and over. And really, your only cost is your cost of milk. And that's it. So when you, when you come to you know, purely economic yeah. considerations in your decision making, you know you can mm. head down to the store and buy it, or you can make it yourself a fraction of the cost with so much more benefits. And many people in our community, it becomes like a pet. I mean, they <laughs> love their kefir grains. They take care of it like a dog or a cat, and they talk to it, <laughs> and they. You know, uh, they put their, their <laughs> intention, their love and their gratitude into the grains and it becomes part of their family almost. In my household, that's what kefir yeah. means to me. You know, it's it's my uh, routine, my ritual that I've followed for, for so many years right now and I love it personally. 